Hi, this is Pastor Scott Bright of Berkeley Hills Lutheran Church. I'm here in the sanctuary of Berkeley Hills, and I have with me my completed crucifix. I earlier had posted a video with this as a work in progress, and as promised, I am here with an explanation of why it looks the way it does and the things that went into it. I'm doing this uh, during Holy Week, the week that we focus on the suffering and death of Jesus, culminating at Good Friday when we celebrate and remember uh, what God has done for us and the total suffering and death of Jesus. This crucifix has a few things about it that are slightly different. Uh, the first and primary one, and I will bring it closer to you, is that unlike most crucifixes, Jesus is not dead on the cross here. Usually, the point of a crucifix is to emphasize the sacrificial death of Christ. I have instead chosen to emphasize the suffering of Christ and suffering that continues when we suffer, God suffers with us. That is the message I wanted to get across here. So you can see his eyes are open, he's looking right at you. There is no spear wound in his side because that happened after he died. Please also note some different things about the face. I gave uh, Jesus a uh, Semitic features and want him to look like a man in his young 30s from the Middle East. Uh, this is because it matters what Jesus looks like. God became human, became flesh, real flesh. And so he had a specific appearance. We don't know exactly what it was, but there are certain guesses that we can make. Please also note the crown of thorns. Uh, I've gone out of my way to make it look uncomfortable and horrible. The nails are in his wrists, which is just simply biologically more accurate because that way uh, the nail going between the radius and the ulna of the forearm would better support the weight of the body. I have given, I don't know if you can see here, I've given Jesus a ponytail. It's just because he's a carpenter and a long-haired carpenter even to this day is going to want their hair out of the way. One of the big differences that you'll notice when you see this even from a distance is that the legs don't overlap. There's nothing in scripture that says that they did. Normally, it is depicted that way. One, it kind of gives it a more streamlined look, but largely because that way there are three nails. Three is a very important number in Christian spirituality, reminding us always of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I've instead decided to go with separate nails so that I can emphasize the suffering as well. Please note that the body is straining out from the cross. I want Jesus to um, be in a, a moment of agony here. The whole idea is I want people when looking at this to feel uncomfortable and to realize the great lengths to which God has gone to redeem us. The legs are bent so that one is slightly higher than the other, seen from the front. In Eastern Orthodox Christianity, the crosses that they use uh, look slightly different than the regular Western cross. The Western cross simply like this dark bit here, and up and down, and a side piece. There is a smaller bar on the top of an Orthodox cross, here represented by this light piece. That's the sign that Pilate had posted above Jesus that would have, this is what they did during a crucifixion. They would have a, a sign usually hung around the person's neck saying what they did to set an example. Thief, uh, murderer, uh, insulted the emperor, something like that. This one, uh, we abbreviate this just because to make it easier to see from a distance, I-N-R-I, in Latin, Jesus Nazarenos Rex Judeorum, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Also in Orthodox Christianity, there is a second bar at the bottom, a short one, that is slanted. This is to show uh, that when Jesus was nailed to the cross, 
his feet nailed the way I have them nailed, uh, he would have wrenched his feet to show suffering. In an Orthodox cross, it goes up this way. Rising to Jesus' right in the direction of the redeemed. When Jesus comes to judge, there'll be the, the redeemed and the damned and, and in the direction of, of those who are God's people, it goes up. I reversed that. Um, rather than now, it would go up, if this were here, in the direction of the sinful people, because Christ died for us while we were yet in our sin. Just a different way uh, to, to understand and help to focus. The point of Christian art is not decoration, but education. And I am hoping that in the years to come, as we are able to use this, uh, it will be able to be attached to a pole and carried in uh, to worship um, on certain days, Good Friday, Holy Week. And I hope that it would help people to uh, better visualize and, and better be reminded. Another way to think about what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Have a blessed Holy Week. Amen.